Hello everyone, I am Dr. Dipankar Anand. I am a practicing eye surgeon in Noida and I would like to discuss with you about uh, the problems of diabetes in the eye, particularly diabetic retinopathy. So if we talk about diabetes, it can affect the eye in many ways, starting with uh, dryness, increased dryness of the eyes and early cataract, glaucoma and finally something known as diabetic retinopathy. So let's talk about the more concerning part of uh, all of this which is diabetic retinopathy. So let's talk about diabetic retinopathy. We must uh, all understand that uh, all diabetics do not get diabetic retinopathy but according to a recent survey it has been shown that at least 80% of all the diabetics will have diabetic retinopathy after 20 years of the disease. So it is important to understand the pathophysiology of diabetic retinopathy. In diabetic retinopathy there are two major factors of pathophysiology which are responsible for the disease. Number one is the vessels, the normal vessels of the retina, they become leaky and because of the leakage there is leakage of fluid into the retina which causes a macular edema and the second most important pathophysiology uh, of the retina which leads to diminution of vision is vitreous hemorrhage and why does this vitreous hemorrhage occur we should all know that the reason being that because of uh, this is all because of uh, new vessels that are being formed in the retina which are more fragile than the normal vessels and these uh, blood vessels they rupture and leak blood into the vitreous cavity causing something known as a vitreous hemorrhage which results in sudden and gross diminution of vision in the eye. So what are the treatment modalities of diabetic retinopathy? There are various uh, modalities of treatment but we should all understand one thing that a regular checkup and a detailed examination of the retina is of utmost importance in all diabetic patients and especially in uh, patients having diabetes for more than 10 years. Now uh, the, coming, to, coming back to the treatment modalities, so all diabetic patients must get their eyes checked every once in a year and they sh it should be a detailed examination of eye with the indirect ophthalmoscope examination followed by something known as the optical coherence tomography which uh, basically helps us detect even the minute changes of diabetic retinopathy in the eye and if suppose some changes are present in the retina one should go ahead with something known as fluorescein angiography to find out the leaky vessels and if required laser should be done as soon as possible. So once diabetic retinopathy has been diagnosed in a patient, what are the treatment modalities? Well, the treatment modalities usually uh, depend on what kind of pathology the patient has. Suppose if the patient has macular edema, then there is a different treatment modality which includes mostly uh, something known as intravitreal injections of anti-VEGFs. Uh, the most commonly used injection of all of them is Lucentis or Eccentrix which is a anti-vascular endothelial growth factor. It basically helps to reduce the fragile new vessels and regress it completely so that the future chance of uh, vitreous hemorrhage is negligible and secondly it also decreases the macular edema of the patient. The one thing which needs to be understood is that repeated injections of this intravitreal injection might be required in some patients in order to keep the macula completely dry. And second of all, now other treatments also include uh, intravitreal injection of steroids but that again has its pros and cons, it can cause glaucoma, cataract and uh, there are lasers present to treat macular edema but uh, those two if it is uh, in not in all cases only in few cases 
now when would it require when are lasers required this is one more important factors which you all should know laser is required in cases of something known as a proliferative diabetic retinopathy in few cases of diabetic uh, retinopathy when i explain a uh, new vessels are formed in the periphery so those uh, new vessels need to be lasered in order to uh, stop them from bleeding at a later stage so something known as pan retinal photocoagulation is required in patients who have been diagnosed with proliferative diabetic retinopathy after a detailed checkup with fluorescing angiography has been done in that patient at a very later stage when uh, vitreous hemorrhage uh, occurs in a patient and that too it is not uh, resolved only in those cases and in some cases of tractional retinal detachment uh, surgery uh, in the form of vitrectomy pass plana vitrectomy with endo laser might be required so of all the things it is uh, more emphasis should be given on the control of diabetes on the control of blood sugar in all the patients whether it is being controlled properly with medications and whether proper exercise is being done these can't be emphasized the more the treatment is obviously required in cases of a patients uh, who have the disease but uh, blood sugar control should be done in all cases and uh, proper regular checkup must be done uh, the patient should follow up with the physician and uh, proper medication should be taken thank you